In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. If you are not a conspiracy theorist, everything that is going to start coming out is going to make you shit your pants. If you are a conspiracy theorist, you are going to be enraged that people are starting to, oh my God, this is really what's happening. I hope you're ready because shit is about to start hitting the fan. I hope you're ready for the truth to come out. I hope you're ready to hear about things that you never thought could have even existed. I know it's dark, I know it's twisted, and it's heavy, but this is literally what we're here for. Do you realize that, like, this can't go on? There's a lot of stuff coming out about children's TV shows. Yo, that's the tip of it. That's nothing. But it's better for the truth to come out and for people who had no clue to now be made aware of the severity of it. And now... We didn't make this shit up. Conspiracy theorists wish they made this shit up. All these conspiracy theories, I definitely like to put a lot of thought into them, but I don't let them bother me to the point where if they do come out, they're gonna be like, Pfft. I'm pretty much expecting a lot of this stuff to come true. And if it doesn't, hey, that's even better. How about you guys? Are you guys ready for all the things that we conspiracize about? It's only a matter of time before some of them start trickling in. I saw a guy on TikTok, he had a book about the science of your head getting chopped off. Yeah, let's hear about it. Yeah, listen to this. Like the, the blinking guy? Yes, yes, that was in. He talked about that. Have you heard, heard this, Lil? I don't know. So I there's a that. scientist during the French Revolution. French Revolution. <laughs> he was sentenced to death by guillotine, and he told his assistant, when my head gets, what? pick up my head, and I'm going to blink as many seconds I as know, I am conscious to blink. <laughs> he blinked 15 times. <laughs> Imagine the guy with just the notepad. One, two, three. Okay. No, but she's. And I, yeah, I can't talk. Golly, I gotta start over. Horrified. <laughs> oh wow! No, there's, but there's other stories too that go with it that are insane. There's a story where these two, it was like two enemies basically, were both getting their heads cut off at the same time, and they're thrown in the same like bag. Oh no! And when they took him out, the one dude was biting onto the other. Oh dude's no! Feet, and they couldn't release him. Oh, that, that's some pretty hardcore science. And I mean, to be brave enough to say, hey, I just want to see how long I'm conscious after I'm beheaded. That's pretty impressive to get 15 plus blinks in. That's that's a lot. That means that you're pretty conscious for a while unless he was like blinking rapidly. But if he was just individually blinking, you know, one, two, three, that's pretty crazy. And the other one where the two heads put in one bag and the guy was biting his cheek, that's pretty bizarre too. It just makes you wonder how much life do you really have if you're strong-willed enough to continue living after your head has been detached? Because I know there's only a certain amount of time, but for them strong-willed people, they probably use as much of it as they can. And it's freaking crazy to me. Should we block out the sun? Geoengineering is manhandling a planet's climate, like terraforming Mars or sulfate aerosols. It's artificially altering a planet's climate. Switzerland has requested that the UN create an expert group to analyze the data on geoengineering. But there's been a lot of pushback for any idea. A few years ago, MIT proposed a non-invasive method, a kind of solar engineering from space. They were called space bubbles. And the idea was that a thin film of inflatable silicon bubbles stretched out to the size of Brazil would be sent to space to partially block the sun. It would be positioned at L1, one of the Lagrange points where the gravitational pull between the Earth and the sun essentially balances out. So the bubbles could, for the most part just float there. MIT calculated that the bubbles would only have to deflect about 1.8% of the solar radiation. So that's 1.8% of more shade to reverse climate change. This is a sail that we could just remove if it wasn't working. Geoengineering is extremely controversial, even the space methods, because obviously messing with a planet could have unforeseen consequences. We can barely predict the weather five days out. Even MIT admits this is a last resort. Dang, that's pretty interesting. I actually kind of like that that idea even though I don't necessarily agree with it but you could imagine if they implemented like power grid technology and turned it into like a Dyson sphere or a Dyson drone kind of type deal where they're collecting energy from the sun as well and transporting it to earth that would be pretty useful but overall I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing because I could definitely throw things off balance 
I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably best to be left alone, but I still like it nonetheless. What do you guys think about this concept? Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph here, you'll see that 30% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, while 69% of the viewers that watch my videos, they're not subscribed, but keep coming back for more of my content. So to the 30% that are subscribed, thank you so much. And hey, to the 69% that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. I finally worked out why you are all asking me uh, if we are restarting the LHC on April 8th. Hi, my name is Clara and I am a particle physicist working on the Atlas experiment at CERN. In fact, I've just finished a night shift in our control room. And I've now finally understood why I'm getting these messages saying, are you starting the LHC on April 8th? It's because the solar eclipse in the US also happens to be on April the 8th. Uh, just to let you know, well, the LHC is already back on. Uh, we've been having beams back in the accelerator since the beginning of March, specifically March 8th, and uh, we have been commissioning the Large Hadron Collider, which means checking that all of the settings and everything's running properly before we do the collisions for data taking. And that's what's happening on April 8th. So we have already been doing test collisions, but it's the regular running that starts on April the 8th. And it's the same thing that happens every year. It just happens to coincide with an astronomical event. But it could be that we are ahead of schedule and it might even happen a day earlier. It could be that extra things need to be tested. It could be a day later. So the timing is a pure coincidence. Well, there you have it from the CERN employee themselves. It's just a test. And it just so happens to be a coincidence that it's falling on the eclipse here in America. I am also kind of a believer that it's not necessarily for sinister purposes. I think that it is pure coincidence. Whether or not CERN is doing some evil things, that I'm not sure. But to say that they're doing it because of the eclipse, I don't know if I necessarily believe that myself. But overall, still interesting. Odd coincidence if that's the case, if this is even really an employee from CERN. Let me know what you guys think. Chilling video of an Oregon man narrowly dodging a runaway four foot saw blade just moments after he went into a convenience store. I mean, obviously it wasn't my time, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably the closest I've ever experienced it. Surveillance video shared with our affiliate showing the saw blade barreling with high speed towards this Oregon store, then striking just inches away from the door that Shane Rimke opened just seconds earlier. The saw blade nearly slicing through the wall. These photos showing the damage. I was walking into the store here, I put my handle on the door, and uh, I heard a loud bang and yelling over here at the corner. Just as a cloud of smoke pops up, and I see a guy fall into the ditch and a four foot blade hurling at me. <laughs> the impact to the front of the store so strong, the owner says the entire building shook. All I heard was like a metal rolling down from the street and I looked at the camera, it was just wind. And all of a sudden we heard a loud bang, like it shook the, literally the whole store. A contractor on the scene who witnessed the incident telling our affiliate that the blade may have gotten loose from a lost bolt in addition to potential operator error. But Rimke says he's grateful to be alive following the close call. Then think thankful to be here, really. Absolutely. Right. I mean, I was thinking maybe it's my time, but I don't think I would have survived getting touched by that thing. That is a very lucky individual. If there is a God, he was on his side that day because if that would have made contact with him, he would have been split in half for sure or he would have been severely injured. So he's definitely a lucky individual because that could have been devastating. And hopefully nobody on the work site was injured as well because that's pretty hazardous. This is not my house, you guys. I'm just a caregiver, okay? So here's the bathroom. Hey, hi. hi. <gasps> Fuck you. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so scared. Okay. This room's cool. This room's good. Holy fuck. I'm I'm fucking out of here. That was a pretty good video. I don't know if it's necessarily supposed to be a paranormal video or if this is a hoax video, but if it was a hoax, it was a very well done one because there's no camera cut if you can notice any. And I mean, 
who knows? The only problem that I have with it is this individual says that they are a caregiver. And I don't know. I just feel like it's really unprofessional if that's the case, if this individual is a caregiver, even though she wants to catch this paranormal activity that's happening. I would feel very uncomfortable that I have someone taking care of my house or myself and they're filming random locations, especially private locations like the bathroom and the bedroom. But overall, if it is a real video, really good. But I have a feeling it's fake. This is a raptor that's an actual raptor. So he's roughly 85 million years old. This is real. It's real. Yes. How did you get this? So we got a guy and uh, when these things come up very rarely, we have another one that is a, a seropod. So we've got two um, and it's kind of an off market thing. They get it when they can get them, they shuffle them around and we were able to snag this one up before it went to auction. Are we allowed to ask how much it cost? Uh, sure. How much did it cost? A quarter. A quarter million dollars? Yeah. I was gonna guess this is a million dollars. If you resold this today, could you sell it for more than a quarter million dollars? Yes, absolutely. I don't know, that thing looks too perfect looking. Like if you see the teeth on that, it just looks way too perfect. It, it looks fake, honestly. I'm not sure if I believe this to be real. I don't think this is any more real than the paranormal video we just watched a second ago. What do you guys think? Do you think this is real? And for a quarter of a million dollars, I, that's not too bad. If I had the extra money, I'd probably buy it as well if it was real because that's pretty cool. But something's not right. This man right here is the reason why Big Pharma is so scared of holistic healing. And what he's about to say is going to blow your mind. Give it a listen. There's only one disease. The judge said, what is it? I said, you already know. She said, try me. It was a woman, Ann Thelman. Mm -hmm. I said, Rana, when someone has sinusitis, what is obstructing the nasal passage? She said, mucus. And when another has bronchitis, what is obstructing the bronchial tubes? <clears throat> She said, mucus. And when another has pneumonia, was covering the cells of the, of the lungs. She said, mucus. Sounds like an extremely bold claim, especially if it's the first time you've heard it. Supreme Court thought so too, especially with all his other claims of curing people from AIDS, herpes, cancer, list goes on. So they try to indict him on federal charges. Dr. Sebi was asked to bring a patient of every disease that he had cured. Total would be nine. He brought 77. And after defending himself in the Supreme Court of Law against federal charges, Dr. Sebi was deemed victorious and granted his freedom. So when he says that there's only one disease and it's mucus, you quickly realize how important it is to get all the mucus out of your system. But how do I get the mucus out of my system? You might be asking. The use of an herb. And that herb is going to be mullein. Mullein helps to flush your lungs of all its mucus, leaving your body in tip-top shape. But if mullein's so great, why haven't I ever heard of it before? Well, that's easy. Big pharmaceutical gangsters make way too much money off you every flu season. So they don't want you healing with herbs. But God intended us to heal with herbs. So we gonna heal with herbs. You can catch mullein growing out in the wild, especially if you live in the US or Canada. But from harvesting to finally steeping could be a pretty lengthy process. To save myself time and energy, I just use the mullein leaf extract. Super simple. You just give yourself two droppers and eight ounces of water and you're good to go. So that's two droppers, eight ounces of water, once daily. Cheers and happy healing. I am a big believer in keeping all of your mucus out of your system if you do get sick. You will notice that if you're suffering from a sinus infection, you have bad backdrop of mucus. I know that sounds really disgusting and I'm sorry, it's, it's probably gonna get graphic. But what I tend to do if I ever do get sick and I do build up that mucus, I make sure that I always spit out my mucus. And I know that's gross, and I know it's not always easy to do, and it can sound nasty too, especially when you're trying to clear your throat or clear the back of your sinuses, but it will help you heal much faster if you eject all that stuff out of your body. And I do my darndest to make sure it never goes in my system. Like I never swallow the mucus. I always try my best to spit it out. Even when I'm in bed laying down, I will lose all the sleep that I get just to make sure that none of that stuff back drops into the back of my throat because you will get incredibly sick very fast if you ingest it. 
But the moment you keep that stuff out of your system, a day, two days later, you're really feeling a lot better. How about any of you guys? Do you guys ever experience any of this symptoms and cure yourselves with any certain type of medicine or natural remedies to help heal your mucus building symptoms? Because it's very interesting and I love to hear all the natural remedies possible to help fix oneself because I'm a huge believer that there's always a natural source to help yourself be better. This is three hours later. I'm about to see if that circle's still in the middle. Let's see if I can zoom in there. See. Look, it's still there, y'all. What is that? What is that, y'all? Somebody tried to say it was the camera. Nah. Earlier when I took it three hours ago, it was over here. In this part of the sky, right? It was over here. Now, we over here. And look, that shit right there. What is that? Whoa. Ha ha ha, whoa. I had a video of this yesterday I uploaded where it wasn't quite as clear. This is definitely much more clear. You can see the actual image of whatever that is within the sun blot. I still think that it's just the sun that you're getting to see past the filter of the clouds and you just see the, the radius of all the light surrounding the sun and that little tiny spot is the sun itself just at a greater distance. But it also leads me to theorize, you know, what if it's like a secret governmental ship or something that they hide by putting it in front of the sun so you cannot see it and just so happens with enough cloud coverage you can actually see it. That's an interesting theory. Do I necessarily believe it? Not really, but it is a fun one to think about. But I'm pretty sure that's just the sun that he's seeing through the clouds and he's just seeing the light radius around the sun and the actual sun itself in the center. What do you guys think it is if you do not think it's the sun? Do you, do you think it's Planet X? Do you think that maybe it's another spaceship or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments because I'm interested to hear people's thoughts on this one. Care base is where we have all our patients stored, currently 199 humans, uh, plus almost 100 pets. So they're not really dead, they're just uh, legally dead. They're not biologically dead, obviously, because you can donate all kinds of organs that are still viable and keep other people alive. Uh, it just means that something critical has failed that we can't fix today. We come at the stage where doctors today have given up, where today's medicine and technology is not sufficient to keep you going, but we're saying instead of just disposing of the patient, uh, give them to us, we're going to stabilize them, stop them getting worse, and hold them for as long as it takes for technology to catch up and allow them to come back to life and continue living. So each patient is wrapped this all in a sleeping bag to protect them in case we have to move them to soak up liquid nitrogen. Then they're put inside this aluminum pod where they're secured in there, so they have mechanical protection, uh, and then they're secured in these. So these things being made of aluminum are very good temperature conductors. They're very much like people in a long-term coma, except there's no, no metabolism. Uh, so to them, you know, no time is passing. They're not alive because obviously they're not, there's no metabolism, not functioning, not moving around. So people say, well, if they're not alive, they must be dead. Well, no, there's kind of an in-between state, which is not really alive or dead. So in our view, uh, dying is a process, and cryonics stops that process. It puts dying on a pause, and lets you go into the future where we have greater capabilities to reverse that and bring you back to life. The first stage of the procedure, uh, we have to wait until the patient's been declared legally dead. We then move the patient from the bed into this ice bath. And we're going to cover them in ice and add some water. Obviously, we don't have that here, but we're going to use this device called the squid to circulate icy water around the patient. That accelerates the cooling, the external cooling. At the same time, we're going to apply a mechanical CPR device. It's much more efficient and less tiring than manual CPR. And a respirator. First of all, we have to circulate blood around the patient. Otherwise, um, the heat won't get moved around, and we want to get heat out of the brain especially, so we have to circulate that around. And also we're going to give a series of medications to protect the cells against damage. Uh, so we're going to stop the patient from returning to consciousness, number one. We're going to stop the blood from clotting. Uh, we're going to keep the blood pressure up. All these things we have to do to maintain viability, much as you do when you're donating organs. Uh, the one in the middle is uh, by far our youngest patient, not quite three years old, a little girl from Thailand who had brain cancer. 
both her parents were doctors and she had multiple brain surgeries and nothing worked unfortunately so they contacted us um, because they were actually medical professionals they actually set up an operating room in Thailand and we could send a team out there and do the procedure we'd normally do locally. When people talk about cryonics they often say well you guys freeze people and that's not really accurate because freezing really implies the formation of ice crystals and that's something we want to avoid because ice does damage the cells. So we, we don't want to freeze the patient, we want to vitrify them. Once you cool very, to very cold below freezing, the solution, instead of crystallizing, will just get thicker and thicker, and it's like a glassy block holding all the cells in place without any internal structure, and so does no damage. And once we reach that point, uh, which happens around you know, minus 110 degrees C or so, um, once that's happened, the body becomes a true solid, and absolutely nothing is happening in the body. There's no biochemical activity whatsoever, certainly no neurological activity. So at that point, really, you could, it doesn't matter whether you wait a day or 100 years, you're going to be just the same as when you started. So um, some of the cooling takes place in, in that box, but then uh, the final cool down will take place in this smaller dewer here. Again, the patient's in, in the aluminum pod, so we can just hook that up, open up our roof, winch them up, move them along, and then straight down into one of these other containers for long-term storage. For the whole body, it's a minimum of $200,000, um, which if you look at the cost of open heart surgery is really pretty low. Uh, just for the brain alone is $80,000, and those are minimums. Uh, and a big chunk of that money is put aside to keep you cryopreserved for the long term. The only group that you really see getting excited about the possibility are people who are sort of people who specialize in studying the distant future, or people who have a stake and wanting you to pay the money to do it. <laughs> I don't really see any mainstream brain scientists, physiologists, people from psychiatry who study the mind. They're not lining up saying, I think this is a sound idea. Moreover, I don't think any of them do it. So at the end of the day, I think this notion of freezing ourselves into the future is pretty science fiction and it's naive. It, it's almost like what you'd be thinking about in a college dormitory discussion, if I could just freeze myself and then defrost myself, kind of like a bag of peas and wind up way in the future, wouldn't that be cool? Sounds okay, but then you realize how much we are products of our own time. Come on, boys, come on, you're gonna jump. Okay, wait, wait, jump. Woo our dog, Oscar, here he is right here. He was almost 15 years old when he became ill, and uh, he was suspended, put in cryonics. I, I, I think that in the future, the people who opted in for human cryopreservation or human cryonics preservation will most likely have family members and or friends who have also signed up for cryonics. And then it's just a waiting period. It's like, you know, you're in flight, you're in transport to your destination, and the destination would be the future where a person who had a cancer or ALS or some other type of injury or disease is revived, the disease or injury cured or fixed, and the person is, um, has a new body cloned or a whole body prosthetic or their body um, reanimated and um, meet up with their friends again. That's pretty crazy. I don't know if this is real because I find this to be extremely insane if that's the fact because who, first of all, is funding this? Is this just a personal funded business or is this a state funded business? What, what, where are they getting this money from other than just rich people that want to be frozen? And how are they sustaining this business? because that's got to be expensive. I don't know if I'm necessarily with this movement. I'm not against it, not necessarily, but I definitely feel like there's some something, if this is the case, is going to happen in the future where people are really, really going to regret doing this, whether that's maybe one day we get soul transferring technology or conscious transferring technology where we can reanimate these people, transfer over their conscious into another body or something. I just don't know. Something does not seem right about this. Let me know what you guys think because I think that we might be messing with some really bad stuff if this keeps going on. So I just took a shower like 20 minutes ago and there wasn't a single ant in the bathroom or anything, like nothing out of the normal. And I would just lay down in my bed and try 20 minutes and I came in to like brush my hair, it's not brushed, and... Oh my God. 
Those were either ants or those were a bunch of little tiny spiders. But nonetheless, I've been through the same a long time ago in an older house and it is not fun. It, it's horrible actually. Getting a whole room full of ants is miserable. Just get some bug spray and a vacuum cleaner and clean the area because you're gonna need it. We are built to visualize and imagine things, so why not imagine something positive and good for yourself? Protect yourself. Imagine a big, beautiful, white bubble that surrounds you. You're inside the bubble. It's like a huge soap bubble, a white bubble, color it whatever you like. And say that that is your protective bubble. Wherever you travel or wherever you go, you ask for that extra protection. Like is not, you will have it. I visualize a white bubble of protection and I'm in it. I do that with my plants every night before I go to bed and I close the back door, I lock it. I've got four plants on, on the table downstairs and I look at each plant and say, thank you for being in my reality. I love each one of you. I enclose you in a protective bubble of white light. And then I turn the light off and I go upstairs. I do that every day without fail. Everybody can work out their own system, whatever it is. Wrap yourself in a protective bubble when you go to sleep, you know, or whatever. You're only limited by your imagination, but do it. I definitely think that you should always consider your safe space. Like, always use some kind of form of protection or barrier, if you will. And it sounds a little silly, but for me, to give you an example, for me, my bubble is me quoting myself and saying that nothing's going to bother me today, everything's going to go well, and I'll do the best that I can. That is my bubble. That's how I demonstrate my barrier, basically. I highly recommend anyone to do that, to just start your day, get out of bed, and say, all right, nothing's gonna bother me today. Even if things do bother you, you can tell yourself it could be worse. Unless it's a super serious, drastic situation, then you need to take care of that. But for the most part, minor inconveniences are just that. They're minor inconveniences. So never let that stuff push you down because it can and it will. But you have to let yourself know that you can put a barrier around yourself. Tell yourself that everything will be okay and it will be. The Ark of the Covenant, it's lost. Some people say it's in Ethiopia, and that's because King Solomon married Queen Sheba. But there's another story. Ark was buried or placed in a cavern underneath the Temple Mount. Supposedly, Muhammad, he went, found the Ark of the Covenant, brought it back to Mecca, and buried it. That's ours. But this is where it gets weird. They were building a new mosque in Mecca in, like, 2015, and they supposedly dug it up without knowing it was there. And as soon as they reached it, there was a giant sandstorm <gasps> that came blowing in. This crane fell, killed a hundred people. Oh my gosh. And then all the people around it said that it looked like a plasma explosion shot into the sky. Oh my gosh. And then shortly after that, a connection happened. Creel, who's the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, met with the Pope and supposedly grabbed the Ark of the Covenant. And straight from the port in Saudi Arabia, the Russian Navy ship went straight to Antarctica. But the theory is that Pope knew where the Ark of the Covenant was and teamed up with the Russian Orthodox Church, took the Ark of the Covenant from Mecca and placed it antarctica what that's weird that's pretty fascinating i don't know if any of that's true you can fill me in in the comments but it does lead me to believe my own theories on things what if the vatican does not have a hidden archive under their place what if they put all of their holy relics and stuff at antarctica what if they have their own place there and that's where they store all of the holy relics because that would make sense. It's a place that not very many people can easily get to, even though you can freely do so. It's not a place that you can just easily help yourself to, you know? It, it would make sense that that's where a lot of things are. Let me know your thoughts about this because I think that there's a lot of people of power that are utilizing Antarctica for a lot of hidden stuff. From the flashlight, I don't get it. I don't get it either. How am I just seeing Put the it back. circle? How are we seeing the shadow of the tree from the flashlight 
when it's the sky behind the tree. And why is there a stop point at the end of my flashlight when it's pointed at the sky? Why isn't it going on further? Like, what the fuck is this? Don't cuss. I'm sorry. It doesn't make any sense. Why? You can see the shadow. Maybe I'm just dumb and I just don't get it. You see the shadow. There's a fucking shadow in the sky. You can see the shadow. <laughs> Let me see if I can zoom. There's a shadow. And like, I don't get it. You're why? going too fast, honey. Why okay. can't we see the circle of light? I don't feel like I've ever seen that before in my life. I don't think I have either. Not in the sky. It just kind of disappears, you know? I wonder if I was standing in front of the house if I could see this. Because you know those party lights? Like the party lasers and stuff? Yeah. To me, I think it's just clouds above the tree line. As you can see, there's no stars in the sky. So that kind of gives me the idea that there is like a low ride of clouds in the night sky. And that's what you're seeing is the light reflecting off of the trees and then casting a shadow on the clouds. Could be completely wrong. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of really negative comments on this video. There's this one individual that says, is school illegal in the U.S.? And let me tell you, it's not illegal in the U.S., but not very many people successfully pass school. <laughs> and it, it shows sometimes. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you are interested in any of the clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.